This is taking people and Pokemon relationships too far. What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. This time, of episode 58, titled Don't Cry Marini. Now, if you checked out this episode, make sure you let me know what your favorite part was in the comments down below. And if you wind up enjoying, show some thumbs up down below and consider hitting the subscribe button to join the domination. So you can help us, help us spread some positivity around. Now, today's episode was all Team Rocket. It was all centered around Team Rocket. When I saw the preview last week, I don't know how excited I was, but it was definitely all focused around Team Rocket, around James and around Marini. And they go through some drama and then they wind up, everything winds up getting back to the way it should be. So before the intro goes, we see Team Rocket is out shopping. Well, Jesse is out shopping per usual, spending money that I don't know where they got it. Or I guess they're selling their donuts and stuff like that. So Jesse's shopping and uh, Marini is out and sees this shining jewelry and it's a Corsola it's like it's a Corsola horn so if you know the story of Marini you know that Marini and Corsola are enemies and that's why in the games you encounter Marini by encountering Corsola and it SOSing for a Marini so James James walks up and says oh do you like that I'm sorry I can't get that for you uh, and as they're going out Jesse's excited about everything that they bought Meowth is reminding them about their their job there is to catch Pokemon and a frillish is out in the ocean. So James says something about it being cute, goes to try and catch it. Marini gets jealous and attacks the frillish. The frillish is gone. Um, James is yelling at Marini, how could you let it? Why would you do this? Now the frillish is gone and eventually apologizes to Marini. Marini hugs James, poisoning him. And then a male Marini appears, or at least I'm assuming it's a male Marini. It's an alternate color Marini. It's very interesting. But then the title plays. Again, it's called Don't Cry Marini. Now the two Marini are staring at each other, James's Marini and the male. We're gonna call it James's and the male because that's the whole episode. Apparently this was the male Marini that James's Marini had talked about before and the male runs toward James's and gets smacked across the face uh, and it turns out that this was definitely a little love affair and Meowth goes into explaining everything he's got his whole set and everything like that and he explains the whole story and what had happened is way back when James's Marini before James came in the picture was searching for a Corsola horn on the beach and was attacked by a tentacruel this male Marini wound up saving it and said that he was going to find a horn for this for James's Marini. A few days later, female Marini returns and sees that male Marini looking well like most men, like most males do, I would say, standing out there handing another Corsola horn to another female. And obviously, the female Marini got upset and left and at some point wound up meeting James and the rest is history. This is their first meeting since that time though. Apparently the male Marini explains that the horn he was giving was just one that that female Corsola had dropped and he actually had James's, he actually had the horn that he was going to give to James's Marini. So he tries to give it to her and she just walks away and walks over to James. So the male Marini attacks James and actually evolves into a Toxapex. It's the first time that we saw Toxapex in the anime. Not as exciting as I was hoping it would be. I'm not gonna lie to you. Toxapex winds up attacking James um, and poisoning him, poisoning him badly. And as Marini goes to attack Toxapex, the Toxapex runs away. But again, James is poisoned badly. He winds up being poisoned where like they need to find a doctor. Normally he can just shake out of it when Marini does it. Well, Toxapex didn't hold back. But Beware comes to the rescue, saves them and takes them back to base. Now at base is James is laying there on his deathbed, dying. He says to the rest of the members that he's gonna let Marini go with the Toxapex because the Toxapex had the, the Corsola horn and it evolved for 
uh, Marini. So it would Marini would be happier going with Toxapex. Very interesting, this love connection between the two of them. Um, but at that point, it shows that Marini had come back and overheard that and was bringing water, spilled the water, and ran away. We see later that night, Marini is sitting on the, be on the beach. Ash, Kukui, and Burnett all walk up and actually wind up taking Marini back with them to their home um, where it stays the night and it's extremely sad. It's just sad the whole time. At this point, I was still I was still feeling weirded out by the whole episode. The whole vibe of the episode was just extremely weird. Um, but while they're sitting there, Marini's sitting on the edge of the couch looking all depressed and sad. Munchlax goes to offer a berry. Now, look at this berry for a second. Isn't that a Pecha berry? And wouldn't that be extremely insulting to Marini? To give it a berry that heals poison when it's a poison type I thought that was kind of weird um, but Kukui at that point has pointed out that this is probably Team Rocket's Marini and they're gonna return it in the morning or whenever it's feeling better um, Burnett made a special bowl of food but Marini just didn't want to have it Munchlax licks his lips as if he's about to go eat it Burnett reminds him that that's rude that night Marini is laying there and is thinking about James you can see him staring off into the window and you see James there and then winds up, winds up dream, dreaming about James and then the next day it goes out back to the beach by itself. So it's walking very sad and again Tentacruel jumps out but this time James comes to the rescue sidekicking the Tentacruel back into the ocean presumably and explains that he was sick all day and apologizes for not coming to get Marini sooner. Um, but then the Toxapex, the Toxapex comes up as well, and they say perfect timing, as if I guess they had planned this out. Uh, which I guess makes sense in hindsight, thinking about it. Uh, and you'll, you'll understand in just a second, but James says that he wants Marini to go with Toxapex, just like he was talking about at the base, and starts to push Marini along, and Marini doesn't want to go. So Marini's holding back, holding back, and James eventually pushes Marini, and Marini tumbles forward into the sand, and that's where it kind of got me. I was like, that, 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 that kind of made me feel a little sad. That's that's not right. Marini didn't do anything for this. Why do you have to push? Why you gotta be so mean? But Marini starts crying and this upsets, uh, upsets Toxapex. So Toxapex attacks James. James is like, you know, we're gonna fight over who gets to keep Marini. I guess Toxapex wanted, at that point, realized that Marini being with James was the better option so they have to fight. But James doesn't have any other Pokemon, so it winds up going James versus Toxapex, Mono E Spico or something. I, I don't I don't know. Um, but they were fighting and James was dodging all the attacks, and there was a new Team Rocket theme playing. It was actually a really cool little theme going on in the background, and the words were going across the top, and it was some crazy they were singing about Pikachu this, and it was it was wild little theme, but it was a cool little theme. Um, but James was just being made to look a fool because he can't attack this thing. This thing's a Toxapex. So Toxapex jumps up and poisons James yet again. At that point, it's over, right? Nope. James goes Super Saiyan, ah, and evolves, as he says, and breaks the poison out. And at that point, you can see that Toxapex starts to look happy. They're fighting each other. It looks like they're having a little cat fight and they wind up collapsing next to each other and like fist bumping each other because I guess Toxapex just wanted to see that James really cared about Marini and was going to be able to take care of it. To finish up, to, uh, the Tentacruel jumps out yet again and this time is thrown by James as far as it can go. And this time Toxapex comes up to James and offers him the Corsola Horn causing a little strange three-way triangle. That's how triangles typically work. Uh, where all three of them are chasing around each other. And that's where the episode ends. It ends with um, Ash waking up, asking where Marini is, and Burnett has already seen it outside. They're just right outside of Kukui's, doing all, ha all having all this go down. That was the episode. Again, we're in filler mode. I don't think anything that happened in this episode, I don't think we'll reference any of it ever again. The one thing that I thought was was 
adding on to stuff that we already know is we did see the one time that we saw all of Ash's Pokemon, we saw Lycanroc and Litten walking with each other. Again, behind my theory that I think Litten wants to be str as strong as Lycanroc, so he's gonna be evolving soon. Um, next week, all we know is that it's Mallow and Lana's backstory, and there's a Drampa of some kind involved. That'll be pretty interesting. Seeing a strong Pokemon or a Pokemon for the first time like Drampa, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. But that's about all that we have to say about this episode. Again, if you checked out this episode as well, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. If you enjoyed our review, go ahead and hit the thumbs up down below as well and consider joining the domination by hitting the subscribe button. We will see you in the next anime review. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.